I'm really a fan of the personal brand style of things and really going after, you know, the niche of you because we're all unique content creators. And a lot of that is finding your unique authority and leverage in the marketplace to hone in on your niche. Welcome to the Video Entrepreneur Podcast powered by Uscreen.tv. This is your host, Rob Balasabas, Head of Partnerships here at Uscreen. This is the podcast that talks about what it takes to build a successful online video business. And every week, we'll take you behind the scenes with top video creators, experts, and entrepreneurs to discuss the world of online videos and what it really takes to build a thriving video business. In this episode, we have Adam Onfroy joining me to talk about entrepreneurship as well as how to accelerate a side hustle in 2022 using a blog. Adam Onfroy has been featured by Entrepreneur Magazine, Business Insider, and even Forbes, and he also teaches his 500,000 monthly readers and over 58 thousand blogging students how to blog like a business and scale their influence at a startup speed so without further ado let's talk to adam hey adam welcome to the podcast how's it going over there good rob thanks for having me yeah yeah glad to have you here i know you're a busy guy and you've got a lot of things going on but i appreciate you uh joining me i think um i was thinking back i think we've known each other probably for a good i think a couple years now and you were still in-house yeah as an in-house marketer for uh, yeah. a big, <laughs> a big online company uh, before you kind of broke off. So um, why don't you, why don't we start off with just you just introduce yourself and kind of what you've done and your whole, a bit of your story of, of how you got here with just crushing yeah. it with your blog and, <laughs> and YouTube now. So yeah, uh, my name's Adam Enfroy and you know, I run a personal brand blog at adamenfroy.com. So I'm a full-time blogger and YouTuber today. And, you know, it wasn't always this way, though. I, sometimes I pinch myself and I feel like timing, was, you know, some luck and strategy and all those things. But uh, back in 2019, I started my blog on the side of my full time job. So January 2019, I was working for a company called Big Commerce and I was living in Austin, Texas. You know, it was a lot of fun, lived downtown. But my job was a classic like tech job. You know, I was an affiliate manager and then a digital marketing director. And I was, you know, I kind of saw my future and I realized that no matter how high up I go in this marketing career, I'm always going to be pretty much answering, you know, questions in a weekly meeting on some statistics and some report and be held to these numbers. And the stress doesn't necessarily go away going from mark, you know, manager to director to VP to CMO or any of those things. And I realized this was kind of a rat race that I didn't want to be a part of anymore. I was working 50 plus hours a week. I wasn't really saving much money. Like I was living downtown in Austin and going out and having fun, but I wasn't able to like, I wasn't building wealth for myself. Um, so the blog was a means to an end. I, I was an affiliate manager first. So I saw on the affiliate management side, all these bloggers making a ton of money promoting big commerce or e-commerce software. So I saw the affiliate side. I saw how that worked and I had experience there. And then I also worked really closely with the SEO team. So we were like cutting edge SEO strategies. So I'm like, you know what? I've been in digital marketing for like eight years now. I should probably just give this a go myself. And I started to learn how startup content teams build blogs. So I'm like, what if I took these strategies from the startup world, the tech world, these big companies with unlimited budgets? And what if I could apply that myself to a personal brand? So I took those strategies and created my blog in January 2019. And in short, the process worked really well. Um, I started writing some specific affiliate articles. I was kind of, wasn't totally sure what I was doing. I was testing and tweaking, but I kept it at my name because I was able to pivot and change and adapt my content. I was always going to keep my name. I wasn't going to delete the blog or make a niche site or something like that. And over time it worked. Within seven months, I was making as much as my full-time salary. So I decided to quit and make the leap. Um, so, you know, fast forward to today, you know, in 2021, the blog made, uh, $1.5 million. We're wow. aiming for three to 4 million this year. And it's mainly driven, you know, by affiliate marketing. So all those, mm -hmm. you go to my website, you see the business software category, different reviews of products. So it's all passive income driven that way, ranking on Google for specific keywords. Uh, if you go to one of those articles, for example, you can kind of see how they're laid out. Um, so ranking on Google for things and um, making passive income through affiliate links. So that's pretty competitive. So we've, we, you know, in the startup world, we found new ways to scale. It's all about scaling your content and link building efforts. 
So that's affiliate and then, you know, course business. So launching an online course, doing all these different revenue streams, but growing one of the fastest growing blogs ever created. Uh, and my main goal is just showing that it is still possible because I got into passive income 10 years ago and I listened to guys and podcasts and I read Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Work Week, And, you know, it always gave me the dream, but it didn't never gave me the nuts to bolts starting from zero strategy to actually do it. So I finally learned enough in my career to figure it out. And all of this stuff, online business, whether it's blogging or YouTube, the two main engines of making money online via algorithms are Google and YouTube. And the strategies to do those things aren't overcomplicated, but it's like piecing a puzzle together. You know, it's every little piece you have to find locking them together. Isn't difficult, but there's just so many dang pieces that it's, Mm -hmm. I was always missing major things. So finally figuring it out and realizing that you can still build a successful business quickly in the 2020s, but it requires a completely different strategy than five years ago. Less, you know, old advice, less like just writing about your passions, staying consistent and you will make money more about strategic partners, partnerships, scaling content, using SEO tools and AI tools, all of these different things that aren't that difficult, but just updated for the 2020s. So today I work on that. My blog is very automated now. So I have eight person team, um, full content manager, content writers, video editors. So a lot of my focus has shifted to YouTube and growing the video side of the business. So it's, it's an interesting and exciting year, definitely. And uh, that's a little bit about, you know, the background and how I got here. No, that's fantastic, man. It's such an awesome story. I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy for your success. And, you know, just kind of seeing you now, you recently launched your YouTube channel, right? And yep. uh, at, the, at the time of this recording, you know, it's about 16,000 subscribers, which is great, uh, growing. Um, and you, I, it sounds like you've got some exciting plans for that. I'm curious, like, do you find do you find this a very familiar territory in terms of, you know, your knowledge with blogging and ranking and SEO? Is this very familiar? Like, you know, how to optimize your videos and all those things. Do you, do you it's think interesting. that's contributed to your success? So I think that with the blog, all yeah. these different make, you know, make money online monetization strategies all di- require really different disciplines. So the initial strategy of affiliate marketing was content and SEO and affiliate programs. So mm-hmm. that's a complete and like link building. So that's kind of a completely different strategy, even from say course sales, which is email list nurture, videos, sending messages, that kind of strategy. And then YouTube's a little bit of a different strategy, right? It's being on camera, video and viewer retention. The things that do apply, I would say, are kind of the keyword research. So as I'm building this channel, I know that I'm not anywhere near some, you know, major YouTuber yet with even 100,000 subscribers. So our strategy has been keyword driven, basically getting into the algorithm based on keyword research. So instead of using like Ahrefs for keyword research for blog, we're using something like, you know, TubeBuddy or vidIQ or one of these good tools to, uh, you know, find these keyword opportunities. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of similar strategy though, as far as content assembly with a blog, you have a content calendar, you have targeted keywords you're going after, you have an outline, you have writers and you have all that. The thing for me is I need to be on camera, at least for my channel until we outsource to like a second channel for, for different types of stuff. Right. But there is the same thing. There's the keyword research, like what we're gonna, what video we're gonna do. There's the competitor analysis, like how long are the competitor videos? Can we make them better than that? Uh, there's um, you know different things and tweaking the tags and the video and the description and all that. Ultimately, it's it's kind of a similar process where then okay, I have an outline, then I'll shoot a video, and mm-hmm. we have an editor. So then it's getting things into the content calendar so I can scale it and get ahead. So it's kind of going from one video a week like we are now to two videos a week, three videos a week, and creating a formula for it based on keyword research, competitor analysis, outlining, and scheduling kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So all of those apply. But a lot of the different stuff is like um, I was not good on camera a year ago. I was actually horrible. I have some old videos, and it's just really (laughs) embarrassing. It's like I was looking away all the time. I was like – Those are the best. Those are, yeah. So like night and day difference. And it, it really comes from just getting reps in and practicing. And I'm not That's right. that great yet. Um, I'm getting better at it, but it's definitely a completely different muscle. It was very uncomfortable at first. I didn't, I did I was always kind of the behind the camera guy, but the more you do it and the more you, you know, you optimize it, the better. I found that 
YouTube, you know, make money online niche saturated yeah. with people that aren't really making money online or like kind of lower value tactics. Maybe YouTubers are making some money on YouTube, but have they started a successful blog? A lot of the people that teach blogging really don't have that much of a successful blog. So we right. come in with kind of the business strategy and we've done these things outside of YouTube. So, but it's a really interesting and different world. YouTube is the thumbnails, titles, the algorithm, how it works is, is really interesting. Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, for our audience here at Uscreen on this podcast, um, you know, it's mo mainly video first, right. And blogging and also, I mean, other, other types of content podcasting is, is a common topic as well. Like, Hey, do I take my videos and go podcast and how do I do that? But blogging is still a very relevant thing that, that our, you know, audience is thinking about starting or growing. Some people have sort of dormant blogs, you know, that they haven't touched in a while. From where you sit, what do you see as a, you know, for a video creator, what should they be doing? Like if they're very active on YouTube, what sort of the first couple of things that they should consider or start doing to leverage a blog or grow a blog sure. um, to, to grow their audience and yeah, expand so that? There's, yeah, that's a great question. And there's a couple key benefits to blogging that you don't get from other things. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, when I talk about, when we talk about web 2.0 and truly growing an online audience and making money, that requires an evergreen, ongoing, consistent source of traffic. So that's Google and YouTube. If I was to bet on two companies, in web 2.0 until we get into web three and all the weirdness, whatever happens there, <laughs> it's going to be Google and YouTube. They're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Other yep. things like Instagram, TikTok, they're more virality. And like, you have to constantly post on this thing. Whereas blogs are great because they're evergreen Google driven engines. So once you start ranking for something mm -hmm. and you're there, you just have to kind of maintain it, but you're getting consistent visits to your website for free. Same thing with YouTube. It's all about like, creating enough content, getting into the schedule so that you have consistent views per hour on all of your videos. So if you have a good YouTube channel and you have a video strategy, a blog is, it has a couple key benefits. One, you get off the content hamster wheel a little bit. You don't always have to be on video with a blog. You can outsource that to a writer, a freelancer, and create that content without your direct involvement. Two, it, it's something that you own. So we all know like YouTube has rules and you know guidelines. A blog is a website that you 100% own yourself. You have the web hosting and you can put whatever you want on there. It's also a great way to get evergreen Google traffic. So if you have the, the video content strategy, it's also great to have the blog as well. So whether you're making money selling a product, you know, YouTube's great for that, reaching an organic audience, selling you know, your own product or recommending other products via affiliate marketing, but also having the blog as a central repository of your business is really important because if you're just on YouTube, that can make you money organically. But what happens if something weird happens with YouTube? You don't own YouTube. Yeah, so having true. a blog is always a good backup plan and it's a very mm -hmm. similar strategy, but it's something that you can outsource that you can, you don't need to be directly involved and you can truly be a business owner, take your hands off the wheel a little bit and allow it to grow. Uh, organically using all the latest like AI writing tools where AI writing is a thing now. You don't have to, it's not about writing entertaining blog posts. To make money, it's about assembling strategic content with AI tools, SEO tools. It's more of a science than an art form. But, you know, I think it's really important to have both because you don't want to just have one or the other. So we had just the blog, now we're growing the YouTube because you need both ongoing traffic channels. Right. But if you just have YouTube, I think it's really important to also do, look at this keyword strategy, look at what you could rank for uh, via Google as well. And it's great because you can interlink the two. Like many of my blog posts now have videos. Like if you go to the Make Money Online navigation tab there and you go to my How to Start a Blog article, you'll see that I've also embedded the YouTube video. So now I'm getting YouTube views from the blog post. Anyone you know, going to Google, clicking on that link and then they're seeing YouTube too. And it works well because Google wants to see unique content videos, a part of that. So it all just really works together. That makes a lot of sense. And so then in terms of the actual content, what's the difference between, let's say if I had a YouTube video, a tutorial, you know, five steps to grow your YouTube channel, um, would the blog essentially be a version where a text version of that I get it transcribed? Is that sort of one, one way to go about it? What, what would you one interesting, there? yeah, that's a good question. So, when I think about this strategy of like same content, Google versus or yeah. a blog versus mm -hmm. YouTube, 
it's it is it's the text based version honestly of that video but it's also its own unique thing like a mm-hmm. transcription would not work to rank on Google necessarily because mm-hmm. it needs to be optimized in a specific format with the right headings you know the right h2 headings the right format and structure for Google the transcription wouldn't necessarily work but so for example if you're doing a how to on both platforms then the YouTube video is all about retention and going over the steps keeping people till the end the blog post is also the instructional list. So people really think in lists. All videos and blog posts are lists. So it could be the five steps to start a blog. On the video, you go over the five steps in order in video form. On the blog post, you go over them in text form with headings. Um, well, the interesting thing that I've found is that there's a lot of, in, in the affiliate world, there's a ton of like the five best, you know, say MacBook Pro accessories or the mm-hmm, five mm-hmm. best credit cards or the best laptops. And when you're doing that on YouTube, or you're doing a product review on YouTube, people searching YouTube for product reviews are looking for really in-depth, hand-holding, this is exactly what this GoPro looks like, here's all the features. You have to go way more in-depth. With a blog that's text-based, if you're doing a roundup post of the best uh, action cameras, they're much more feature-driven People scrolling through blog posts, not necessarily reading them, they're skimming them. So they're a lot easier to assemble. You don't even have to necessarily buy that GoPro. You can look at the features, write it out, have a writer write it out, and do it in a more automated way than even buying the product. So there's kind of a different strategy. Each one has its own unique strategy. You can't necessarily take a YouTube video and then put it on and in blog form, but you can create the unique blog post and embed the video as well. That's like the perfect way to do it. Yeah, that's so that's so true. That's so true. I never even I mean, you 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 consume this type of content all the time. You just never really think about that sometimes like it's it is more when I'm when I'm searching a product, I'm just looking for features like I want to see that it does this specific thing. Like, can can I take this GoPro underwater and how far can I take this GoPro underwater? Exactly. You know? I remember um, I remember looking for like these 360 cameras and mm-hmm. GoPro and I was trying to find it on YouTube and I expected like, well, I want to see the actual footage of what it looks like. Right. GoPro Hero 10, I want to see it like the stabilization footage on YouTube and look and see what it really looks like. And if I'm, you know, blog content is just consumed differently. Like people on YouTube expect that level of professionalism and like deep dives. Whereas on Google, it's like just skim and give me the top 10. Cause then I can go read yeah. about it. So it's easier yeah. to create that content. Um, easier to, you know, assemble that content without yeah. having to go super in depth. So that's another benefit of blogging. Yeah. I like that. Um, in terms of the platform for blogging, is it, is WordPress still King? Like I'm seeing, you know, some colleagues of mine blogging on medium, blogging on LinkedIn, LinkedIn articles. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's definitely still WordPress. The key is WordPress. having your own unique yeah. domain. So platforms right. like LinkedIn and Medium, again, you don't own. You can't really monetize that well via affiliate marketing. You build up some followers on Medium, but then how do you monetize that and sell your own course and affiliate links and all that? So I know people use WordPress primarily because it's great for SEO. It's the most customizable, mm-hmm. and most blogs that are ranking are on WordPress. A lot of people yeah. like Webflow, too, as far as like a newer platform to use. I don't have a ton of experience with it, but it is still pretty easy to set up like a simple WordPress website with mm-hmm. web hosting like Bluehost or WPX, right. uh, simple theme. Like there's a couple like Astra or Cadence that are really simple and just optimized to rank. Um, but yeah, it's primarily WordPress still. In WordPress still. Huh? Like mm-hmm. even, I mean, you know, we have some friends that are in the, you know, using Squarespace or Wix and they have their own blog features, but um, I suppose WordPress is still. Just it is still king. Like, like there's not, I, I actually, back in 2019, when I didn't completely know what I was doing, I started on Wix myself mm. and, you know, it's just a lot more limited from an SEO perspective than, you know, if you want to rank for some serious stuff and compete, it is pretty much WordPress for your content management. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, in terms of, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just asking questions that I'm really curious about. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so once, once you start, uh, the blog, like, you know, on YouTube as a, as a YouTube creator, you know, this Adam, like, you know, there's always like, how frequent are you creating videos? You know, once a week tends to be sort of the going, the going mm-hmm. advice out there from all the experts, you know, one new video a week, one piece of new content on YouTube a week. Is that the same sort of rule that applies on blog when you blog? Does the frequency really matter or is it more the quality yeah. or? Um, 
Yeah, and it, it kind of depends. So an example mm-hmm. is like when I first started my blog, I was I was writing every everything myself for the first six months. I didn't want to hire a writer until I was really making more money, and um, so I was writing everything myself, which required you know more time and all of that. And I was probably doing one one to two blog posts per week. Now a blog post is typically two thousand words or more, depending on the content and the niche you're in. And now we're in the age though of uh, increased content publishing. So mm. there's, there's different things like, you know, YouTube videos completely, you know, a YouTube strategy, it can be tougher to compete with, you know, big YouTube channels and rank and get you know, into the algorithms for difficult, you know, very competitive areas. But Google is, is a little bit tougher in that regard because there's like 10 spots on the front first page of Google. After that, you're not going to be seen. It's not like the algorithm can pick you up at number 30 and show you, you have to be in the top 10. Right now with AI writing tools and lots of media publishers, like big media sites, tech radar, CNET, New York times, CNN, entering some of these keywords, you know, there's a lot of, you're competing with businesses now. So you have to get a little bit smarter. So, with all these AI writing tools going up against content teams, like the speed of publishing can be important, like over time. Uh, Right now, I think my team's publishing anywhere from 16 to 20 articles a month Mm -hmm. and then doing, you know, 16 to 20 content updates a month because updating is also important. But if you're just starting out, you know, taking some startup business principles into your blog is really important. You know, we all typically start with full-time jobs like I did. It's usually a side hustle. Um, and as long as you're getting like one consistent blog post published a week, I think that's enough to get started. Mm -hmm. It really is. And you know, if you're spending, maybe you can spend 10 hours a week on a blog and Mm -hmm. start growing that. And then it comes down to your content strategy, what you're writing that you're going to make money with doing some link building because authority is really important. You know, when I first started, I shifted most of my focus and energy away from actually the content and towards getting backlinks and building relationships. Mm -hmm to show Google that I'm a trusted, you know, authoritative website. So there's no clear cut answer as to exactly how many, but I think it is, it's a good, like safe assumption that at least once a week with a blog similar to YouTube. Got it. Got it. Yeah. The other thing I guess is uh, the promotion, right? Like what is, you know, t- talk to us a little bit about the promotion strategy here. Cause obviously yes, Google search is one traffic source, um, your own YouTube channel. If you have an existing YouTube channel, if you're driving traffic to your blog, it's another traffic source, but promotion, how important is promotion in terms of, like you said, backlinking guest posting on other blog, yeah. you know, other blogs, um, you know, and, and going out there and, and sharing your blogs on LinkedIn and social media and all that stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So actually that? that's a really good question and I'm pretty, I have a pretty firm answer with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's interesting. So when you're starting a blog by itself, so yeah, I think YouTube is a good source because Mm -hmm. people are viewing you and it's a great organic way to reach a new audience But with a blog, you know, when you first publish articles, you'll say you start a brand new blog and you publish Mm -hmm. 10 articles or 20 articles, even if you don't have any backlinks to those articles, they're not going to rank on Google. They might rank number 80 like page eight, page 10, they all start out very low. So they're not going to be found. What people tend to do then is say, all right, I'm going to post it on Facebook and Instagram and try to get traffic from social media. I tend to completely avoid social media. Social media to me is kind of an attention economy, passively scrolling for entertainment business, whereas Google itself is a informational search intent, business driven informational type thing. So I didn't do any like, you know, promotions of my blog posts or like if I publish a new article, I don't share it on social media or try to get traffic outside of Google specifically because you have to master Google to make money blogging. Mm -hmm. And that's because of search intent. People are searching actively in their mind. They think of something, type it into Google and they want that information and they hopefully will purchase something because of that information. Not true on social media. So the main strategy for promotion is guest blogging and building links to your blog. So when I first started my blog, I published some articles and then I'd spent probably 75 to 80% of my time reaching out on LinkedIn and through email to get guest posts on other websites. Because then through the guest post, I can link back to my blog, build authority by passing, you know, link value to my website. And then over time that those articles started going from page eight to page six to page four, then you start to post things 
and you're, you have a higher authority, then you start to post articles and they're on page two, right? When you publish them and then creep up to page one, because all the traffic is on page one. The only way to get there is one good content and two links, not social mm -hmm. media or anything else. So the quicker you can just get backlinks to your website, the quicker you'll get to page one, the best content and the best links always win. So avoid social media completely. Don't think about promoting on Reddit or comment sections or anything like that. The quicker that you just focus on publishing content and building links via guest posts, that's how you'll rank. And then the th and traffic will go from hundreds to thousands to hopefully hundreds of thousands. So the promotion takes time. There's not like a direct promotional schedule per se, where it's like right. publish and promote. It's more right. like start from zero build these links, keep going and going and build this content and link engine until eventually all of your content starts ranking and you're getting traffic for free. That makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. And so I guess in terms of those guest blog posts, are those guest blog posts unique, unique articles or are they sort of excerpts from yeah. your existing content that links back to the full thing on your, on your own blog? So they're all unique articles. So every unique guest articles. you write, yeah. So if I write one for Uscreen, for example, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a hundred percent unique article. Um, and I believe I wrote one for Uscreen, yes, <laughs> on affiliate marketing and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so it becomes holy crap. So you're telling me I have to write content for my blog, and then I have to yeah. write <laughs> guest posts to get links. How the heck do I do that? Well, you have to kind of like, if you really want to grow this, like a true business, you have to yeah. outsource some of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't write most of my guest posts myself. Like you, there's a whole, you know, um, it's a whole strategy behind it, yep. a way to outsource some of these guest posts that you're, you're maybe you might be doing some of the pitching and the topics, but then once yep. it gets to the writing, you have somebody do the main writing and then you're just doing some editing and tweaking, adding your links, making sure everything looks good. Yep. So that's where these business strategies come in because yeah, it's hard by yourself to be like, I got to write 10 articles for my blog and then another 10 guest posts. Like that's too much content, but by strategically outsourcing, when you're making a little bit of money and funding, you know, some writers, you know, on either on Upwork or something like that, you begin to increase your publishing frequency. Like mm -hmm. my blog's first year, I did 80 guest posts and probably 80 articles on my own blog. So when I look at the actual word wow. count, it's probably five to six novels worth of content that was written. But I didn't write 90% of that myself. You know, you have to treat it like a business and you have to create the, you know, you're the mastermind behind the keyword research, the assembly, the strategy to compete in the 2020s. Yeah, no, I like that. I know that our, our listeners are probably wondering then, um, where do you find solid, uh, you know, copywriters and, and people that will help you create this content and outsource that too? Yeah. So, you know, anything that you're creating and we're growing right now from like a, you know, I always talked about blogging like a startup and like a business, but I realized my yeah. first year I wasn't a business yet. I only had a couple people on the team. I was using <laughs> some of these principles, but now that it's 2022 and I'm like, all right, we're growing to eight person full-time team. Wow. Now it's like, okay, how do we hire these people? And what I realized when you're really scaling up a business, a content business, I have to get a players that are delegated these tasks to do the things that I don't and can't spend my time doing. So I can't be spending time writing. I can't be spending mm -hmm. time editing videos, tweaking web design things, doing sales. All of that stuff has to be outsourced so that the team lets me spend 80% of my time on public facing content, which is like content creation, course videos and YouTube videos, and maybe a podcast in the future. Like so this anything one. that, <laughs> yeah, like this one. So like time spent like this. So and I couldn't do that if I didn't have the engine of this content business, which is content managing, content management, video management, sales, web development. That's pretty much it. I might be missing something, but there's a different strategy kind of to hiring different types of people. So content writers, you can probably find on, like I actually, my, some of my first writers, I, I posted a job opportunity on this pro blogger job board. I got like 50 applications through there. Wow. There's also, um, Upwork, like getting people through there. You kind of want to get people though that aren't on a platform eventually. Mm -hmm. Like, cause a lot of freelancers do lots of different websites and writing and whatever they're doing. So you need to eventually get somebody that's kind of full time doing your stuff. And yep. to do that, it really is a matter of training. Like you can't go around it. Blogging is so nuanced. So is video editing. You hire a video editor, you like a certain style, a certain way, a certain type of 
lower third graphics and text and feel. Same thing is true with blog video or blog content. You need to, I found that the really helpful thing is whether it's YouTube or a blog, you have to remember it's not about writing. It's about assembling content strategically. So giving a clear outline every time with the same style of headings, the same style of, you know, features and content and all of that, and then giving clear direction. I love Loom for that, like Loom videos. Hey, make sure to do this. Always kind of training and getting 10% better every post until they're doing it exactly how you want to do it. If your team is not doing it how you want, that's only a reflection on you and you didn't train them enough. So it's Loom videos. It's perfecting it over time. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but that's really how you have to do it. So you can also, you know, optimize writing with, all right, get this to a 99 in Grammarly. So all the grammar is checked. Get it to an 80 or higher in Surfer SEO so that the SEO is optimized. So you can give them clear definitions and direction and then loom videos and get them to a point where you feel confident delegating to the point where they're doing this on their own. Cause that's going to ultimately save you time, whether it's video editor, content manager, salesperson, web developer, it's like the clearest direction. If you can spend more time perfecting the process, it'll be easier in the long run. Cause I think they, you know, I've been told and, and, and learned that Oftentimes, like marketers and online creators, we focus all on the traffic and the leads and all of that. But if we haven't focused on the processes and the system for long-term stable business growth, that's pretty much usually the most important thing is getting that done. Makes so much sense. Makes so much sense. Well, talk to us uh, like me uh, and some of the listeners here that are thinking about a blog, but are video creators first. How? What are the first things they should start doing uh, to get that off the ground? Yeah. So it depends, you know, you can be a YouTuber in any niche and get all types of different content in multiple niches. So you have to kind of position your blog with your own brand. So we have to first think, what are we going to blog about? Well, if you already have a YouTube channel or video creation, then you're probably going to be talking about what you're already talking about. So you have to really, you you know, I teach in my course and in my blogging masterclass about, you know, the unique brand of you. So we're in this attention economy and we don't want to create some tiny niche blog that only makes a few hundred dollars. We want to build the true personal brand of you. And a lot of that is finding your unique authority and leverage in the marketplace to hone in on your niche. There's a reason I created my site at adamenfroy.com and I wasn't some small niche site like the email marketing guy. If I started writing about email only, then I would have pigeonholed myself. So you really want to go broad. I always recommend you start you know, either with your name or your broader business name so you can adapt and create it's a lot of startup principles creating minimum viable posts strategy based on data based on what's working and you can pivot your content adapt and see what's working over time so ultimately you want to think about what you're going to actually blog about so you have to think about what is on that homepage of that blog. If you're a fitness instructor, then, then it's probably a fitness blog and your face is on it that way. If you're teaching, you know, woodworking, then you have your face on the blog as well. It's something like that, but kind of, I, I'm really a fan of the personal brand style of things Mm -hmm. and really going after, you know, the niche of you because we're all unique content creators. There's YouTube videos about everything under the sun. There's all blogs about everything under the sun as well. So ultimately, I don't want to bore you with sign up for web hosting, create your first blog post, all that. It's like really identifying what you're going to blog about. And I can lay this out too. I laid out exact my exact content, link building, affiliate marketing strategies, all in this masterclass. But it comes down to finding the niche, the niche of you, creating and assembling your first, you know, two to five blog posts. And that usually includes, well, what the hell do I write about then? Well, that's, you know, maybe a couple transactional affiliate style posts. You can have a, what we like to call a link bait post, which is like a really long list in your niche, like something really impressive, you know, the 201 best home exercises to really dominate and start getting links to something like that. Also an article on your unique experience, ultimately having the blog with, you know, setting it up simply, you know, we have tutorials on this stuff all over the internet and I do as well, but it's getting it to a point where this site looks professional enough to get backlinks. So then you can start your relationship building strategy and getting links. So ultimately it's just get started. It's pretty easy to create a blog, but the longer you get stuck in the perfectionism, I did that for a while. I need to tweak every pixel to make it look perfect because people are going to judge me based on this design and the content and it's scary. It really isn't. You just have to, to get started. 
That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great way to start. And I know that a lot of our uh, viewers and listeners here are already blogging, um, are considering starting a blog, um, you know, to sort of go hand in hand with their YouTube content, their video content. And so I think, you know, your masterclass, we're going to be linking to that masterclass. So if you guys are listening, you want to check that out. We'll have that somewhere in the show notes or in the description. Um, and Adam, this has been really solid. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being a Uscreen uh, affiliate partner as well. You know, you're doing so awesome there and uh, just really glad that you're able to share some of your knowledge with us. Yeah, thanks, Rob. It's been great. I appreciate the time. It's been great chatting with you. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that. If you have any, if if, if you want to know kind of how to start a blogging business in the 2020s, what it takes from like a content SEO link building perspective, how my blog makes 1.5 million a year, check out that free masterclass, sign up and uh, uh, look forward to seeing any students go through that. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss any new episodes as they're published. And if you want to learn more about using Uscreen for your business, or you want to join our affiliate partner program and earn recurring commissions by sharing Uscreen with your audience like Adam has, head over to uscreen.link slash podcast to get more information. And I'll see you in the next episode.